example here. Um, again, one of the most challenging things is when you get given um, a question that requires some visual that isn't directly handed to you. Now, this particular question does want to hand it to you because the graph is, um, it's a difficult, unusual looking graph. Um, they say it's provided in a textbook, but let's actually do it in Desmos in case you're, you're not sure how to do this. I can show you how to work it through. So uh, let's put that to one side. I don't need any of these values from earlier, new blank graph. Let's move this over a little bit. Okay, so uh, it says here, we've got a couple of graphs that are sketched together. So I'm gonna start by putting in the first one, x minus functions, I need a drink function, sine x. When you have a look at it, it's a pretty weird, bizarre looking thing, right? Like what is going on here? It's sort of like a weird looking slippery dip that goes forever, okay? So there's x minus sine x. And then I also need, let's bring back this, I also need x which uh, is familiar, familiar, familiarly, is that a word? Anyway, um, it's, it's the old familiar line through the origin that has that gradient of one, okay? Now sketch together, it says find the total area enclosed between these graphs, so we're getting an area between curves again, uh, between or from x to two, uh, x equals zero, to x equals two pi. Now, you might be less familiar with this. You can actually do domain restrictions in Desmos. Some of you have had this shown to you by your teachers. Whoa, I'm highlighting stuff, why am I doing that? To get your domain restrictions, what you need are those curly braces. So um, it's the ones that look like this. These are the curly braces. They tend to be, if you think back to um, our work on function notation a little while back, that's how we write our domain restrictions. So you can see them in the, um, in the bottom of the keyboard, near the middle. So I'm gonna put these curly braces in and then you restrict the domain however it is that you like. So I'm gonna go from naught to two pi. So what you can see is I've got, let's move this over a little bit. I've got just this little portion here, okay, of the graph. I'm gonna do the same thing for X because both of the graphs are restricted and I'll restrict them in exactly the same domain. So from naught to two pi, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna shuffle this out of the way, we don't need it. I can see my graph here beautifully. There's a few things I wanna point out. For starters, when you use Desmos from scratch, the default setting is that you are in radians. Um, and you can see that if you have a look at the numbers on the axes. Um, sine x, where does it usually have one full loop? Um, it's gonna be the same as this x minus sine x thing. It has one full loop at x equals two pi. That's why they've chosen this particular boundary. Now, it doesn't look like x equals two pi because um, we're not familiar very well with the decimal expansions, but if pi is 3.14, then two pi is about 6.28, right? And you can see it there over there on the right hand side. You're like, oh yeah, it just goes past six. Now to make it even more obvious to you, and again, some of you may be familiar with this feature in Desmos, if you change the way that the axes are written, um, the scale is written, then you can see it much more obviously. So go to that spanner icon in the top right hand corner, and then when you have a look under X axis and Y axis, you can see there's an option there on the right hand side that says step. So what this means is, um, how much does it step up by each time as you go up and down the axis? If you have a look at the moment, the step is two. There's two, four, six, eight going up the Y axis and it's the same thing on the X axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the step into something that fits radians, namely pi. So again, um, you can actually type pi on your keyboard or you can just use that pi symbol that's over there in the bottom left of the Desmos keyboard. If I hit pi there, have a look at what has happened to our x-axis now. There's zero, then pi on two, then pi, three pi on two, and of course two pi where we end. Um, just for completeness, I might as well do it for the y-axis as well. So this looks much better, right? I can see exactly where I'm integrating. In fact, I'm just going to grab this screenshot because I want to draw all over it. Let's just grab the appropriate section in here. And now, I am just going to come back into my notes and let's look at this picture together so that we can work out how to evaluate this area. Okay, so I've got the picture now. I'm ready to actually come back to what they've asked, which is find the total area enclosed between these two graphs. So if I come in here closer, you can see here is the area I'm interested in, right? There's the first of the regions and then there's another one up here, okay? Now, I'm going to just firstly state what the area is equal to in terms of appropriate 
integrals. So I've got two that you can see, um, the left hand side and the right hand side. So I'm going to call this guy A1 and this guy A2. So what would be the integral for A1? It's an integral, um, rather it's an area between two curves, so I just need to know which is the top and which one's the bottom. Now the top one in this case is the blue line, which is y equals x. That was the formula given to us in the beginning. So I'm going to write that as the integral starting from, have a look, it goes from naught, and then where does it end? Well it ends halfway, which on this, and this is why um, Desmos was so handy for us, that's pi right there in the middle. You can see that's where a1 finishes in terms of its x values. So I go from naught to pi, I'm going to take the top section and then I'm going to subtract this bottom section which we said was x minus sine x, yeah there we go, okay. So I'm going to do a subtraction here, x minus sine x, bracket bracket, all with respect to x. Now before I go any further, I want you to notice that I can actually use this knowledge about a1 to work out a2 as well. In the trigonometric functions, um, you're going to get lots of symmetry and that's because you've got um, odd and even functions. Sine is an odd function and uh, cosine is an even function. Uh, tan is also um, an odd function too. So because you get this symmetry all the way through, I hope you can see that a1 and a2 are identical in size. So therefore I can say um, that a2, I'm going to state its integral in a second, but I can say it's equal to a1, so I can just double that and work it out. This is a2 by the way if you're curious. Um, I'm going from pi to 2 pi and at this point the red graph is on the top so it's going to be x minus sine x and then I'm going to subtract the bottom function which in this case is now x. That would be a2 and you can go ahead and you, you can integrate it but I'm always interested in saving as much time as I can so instead I'm going to say from the graph a1 equals a2 by symmetry. Always keep an eye out for symmetry when you're working with trigonometric functions. So therefore I can say the area is just double a1 and I don't need to even touch a2 and I can uh, dust this integral off and be done with it. So I'm going to grab this integral from up here and as we've seen in many situations, um, I can do some simplification here before I actually begin the integration. That'll make things a lot easier for me. From naught to pi, I'm going to have uh, this, let's go to a more visible color, this x and this x in here, they cancel, so I don't need to write them. And then I've got this negative times minus sine x, so the negatives will cancel, just leaving me with sine x dx. So don't forget you are not differentiating, the primitive is not cos x, the primitive is minus cos x from naught to pi. Uh, I'm going to just be really careful with my minus signs here, so I'm going to take a minus sign out the front. Uh, I'm going to still have this same primitive here from naught to pi and now minus sign and I'm going to do top boundary take away bottom one. So this is cos pi take away cos naught. Now um, if you want to think again about the what cos looks like, the graph, it's this valley looking shape that I mentioned before. So cos of pi is right smack bang in the middle. It's going to be negative one. You can see that y value that I get over there. So this is minus negative one out the front and then cos of zero, this guy in here is uh, up here. So that's just a value of one. So, well, so many negatives. Negative of negative two, that gives me two, but don't forget this is an area. So therefore I conclude area is two square units. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, remember the graph is super important and the accuracy of it matters. So in other situations where you're not provided the graph, take the time to develop the skill so that when you need to graph in order to help you work out an integral, you can do it efficiently, quickly, and then focus on the other parts of the question, the calculus parts.